Okay, so today our mission is to take down that tree right there that the ladder is standing against. It's standing dead wood right now. And it was creaking really, really loudly uh, two days ago when we had a big windstorm. So we want to take that tree down so it doesn't fall down on those power lines that are right back there, as well as the telephone line. So what we're going to do, I'm going to climb up to uh, a safe level on the tree. I'm going to attach the cable. Then we're going to pay the cable all the way out there. We're going to anchor it with our ground anchors. And then we're going to start winching on it. Then I'm going to come back here. I'm going to make my, uh, uh, my face cuts, my wedge cut, and then the one back cut back here. Now I'm not going to finish it. Then I'm going to go all the way back to the winch again. I'm going to pull the winch really tight. Then I'm going to come back here and cut a little bit more. And then, according to the plan at least, I'm going to go back a third time to the cable or to the winch. And I'm going to pull the tree down at that point. So now he's climbing the tree to get the cable around it so we can pull on the cable and knock the tree down. Okay, so these are going to be my ground anchors. I'm going to put in uh, four ground anchors today. Uh, at the end of the chain right over here, I'm going to put one of them in. Then I'm going to string out four more along, along this line also. In a moment, you'll see me uh, pounding them in, and then we'll start tensioning everything. So I'm going to go about uh, three feet. One, two, three. I'll put the next one in right here. What we've got now is that I've pulled the cotter pin out. That's the locking pin. And I have to align this hole right back here with this hole. All right? So I slide that in. I find the hole. I align it. Now there's a little bit of a swell I put into the cotter pin there. And the idea behind the swell is that it acts as a spring. I lightly tap it in until it gets to the eyelet right there. And that secondary swell acts as a spring. So if you take a look at this, you could see that just after the eyelet here, there's a little bit of a swell right there. That swell acts as a spring, and it doesn't have to be much of a swell. All right, so here we go again. Now I use the other end to lightly drive it home, and it acts as a spring, and it keeps it in there, and it won't fall out. This way I don't have to bend over the ends of the cotter pin, weakening it each time. All right, now let's go take a look and see how we've taken our anchor chain, we've wrapped it right here, then we've come around, you can come around this way right here. I always take my sledgehammer and I center it so that it is centered right on that first ground spike. The idea is that if the winch is pulling really, really hard and this first ground spike starts moving, it'll actually start pulling away forward like this from the sledgehammer and the sledgehammer will fall because it's leaning against it. So at that point I know that my ground anchors aren't holding and I need to come up with either more ground anchors or a different idea. Okay. The other thing too is that I always try and I strongly recommend that you take the live end right here because this is the pulling end right here and you wrap it underneath so that this end right here goes over the top as you can see. Right? 
the idea is that if you reverse it, put this live end on top, this ground anchor lets loose, the chain will just fling off. This way, the chain will actually bite into the ground anchor. So you want to put your chain, when you're wrapping around the ground anchors, start from the winch end and then wrap around it. The first spike, then the second, then the third, then the fourth. And it naturally falls this way. And then step on it with your heel to press it all the way down. And then set up your... your sledgehammer. And then this ground anchor is the same way. So the, lo the loaded end is on the bottom and the unloaded end is on top. Same thing here again. And once again, same thing here. Okay, now we're gonna start putting a little bit of tension onto the winch. Now, Wyatt Scott strongly recommends, as well as I, that you make sure that you have at least three, four, sometimes five. I usually like one, two, three, four, five. Five wraps of the Amstel Blue rope, nylon or a synthetic rope. That way it'll grip the spindle, the, the center of the reel here. So it won't actually unspin and it won't put uh, pressure against, let me show you right here. Right here is your rivet that's holding the end of the rope in. And you don't want to put any kind of undue pressure right there on this rivet that's holding the rope in. Okay, so here we go. Now in a moment, we're gonna run out of rope and I'm gonna have to reset the whole thing because right now we're just taking slack out of the chain the rope and the wire the cable that's actually attached to the tree and what I'm doing is I'm guiding the rope onto the reel and I'm using my thumb and my fingers right here, so I'm actually squeezing this. Or once I get to this side of the reel, I'll actually be pulling it in the opposite direction. And what I'm doing, I'm guiding the rope so that it reels up. And I'm actually guiding the rope onto the reel so that it reels up nice and even. Now when I get to the other side, I'll actually be pulling this way to keep it in that direction. Okay, so now I'm pulling the rope towards me so that it reels onto the spool nice and even. As I get to the center of the spool, obviously you don't have to either push or pull. All right, let's go check our alignment. That were the chain, the rope, and the cable are off the ground. And now I'm looking at my anchors here. It's looking nice. No movement, which is exactly what I was hoping for. Now, if you take a look at this nice alignment, we've got everything pretty much in a line. And if you stand right here, you'll be able to see the white snow on top of the cable reflecting off the darker bark on the tree. Now, as you can see, I had to shorten my chain a little bit, so I grabbed the chain with the, uh, with the grab hook right here. 
But what I want to do is I want to grab the live load of the chain. So I'm coming through here and I want to make sure that I don't grab this end of the chain to try and unload it. I have to stay on this end of the chain. So as you can see, I'm going to follow this around, making sure that I'm on the live load, not the return leg of the chain. So it coils back over, now it's on the camera side. Now it's coming under again. Now it's back on my side. And now I'm gonna, this is my reset chain. So I've just picked the arbitrarily, I picked the link right here. Let's say this one. Okay. And, let's see. and that's gonna be my reset. Actually, I'm gonna come back to this one again. Okay, so this is gonna be my reset link. Now on this one, I'm just going to grab a link back here. So I come over here. And again, I want to make sure that I'm on the on the live side. On the live side. There you go. I'm going to check it one more time. Make sure, yes, I am on the live side, not the return side of the chain. All right. Now, we start taking the load off the winch. So the way to do that is you put a little bit of pressure onto the winch, hold back this tooth right here. Now be careful. Now the total weight of the winch is on the bar here. So you could, if you let go, it, it'll come back and hit you in the head. That would obviously not be good. Then reset it here. Put a little pressure on, release this. and repeat this operation. Now once it's released, largely released, you can just by pushing down on this, it, it unlocks the back teeth by releasing this. It releases the front teeth and you can unspool the whole thing. And again, I like to leave four wraps on. One, two, three, four, there you go. Now I've got all this rope paid out again. Now if you come take a look at this, you'll see why I did this, right? Because right now, all that weight we put onto the chain is still on the chain, except that it's being held right here. This end is free. Now we can come back here and reset this guy. There we go. Now I take my rope, my AIM steel blue rope, I uncoil it, what coil I had in there, I find my chain, once again ready to pull. So I'm going to put just a little bit of pressure on, then I'm going to fire up the saw and I'm going to start making my cuts on the tree. Now you got to keep a little bit of pressure onto the live, lot, live side of the rope so that it coils up nicely for us. Timber. Timber! Timber! Woo! 
Okay, so what's left for us to do? We have to pull out the ground anchor, okay? Now, to give you an idea of how we're gonna pull out ground anchor, we're gonna use leverage in this chain right here. So what you wanna do is you want to put the chain down, wrap the chain at least three turns. That's one, two, three. If you can, now if you want, you could do one more, four, but at least three turns you want. Then you're gonna to wanna to take the hook, the hook right here, and you wanna put it on top of the chain. So you wanna put it on top. You do not wanna do that, that's wrong, okay? Do this, so you're gonna put it on top of the chain. Like that, okay? Now, if you look at this from the side right over here, you'll see that the original chain started wrapping from way down here, okay? And what you're doing is you're asking the rest of these chains to bite down and lock the chain in place when we go to lift it. Okay, so there's step one. Okay, we're gonna put that on there like that. That could be loose because it'll bind up later. Okay, now here's the next one. So if you take your two hands like this, turn your thumbs all the way back around like this, and then grab the chain like this. So your thumbs are out here, okay? Then pull in and twist. This is the next one. This is a magic little let me make this really big so you can see it for the camera. So all you've done is this, okay? And now you're going to put them together like that. You can take your pry bar. You're going to slide it through there. Then you're going to take a piece of wood or something taller. Stand it right next to it. Catch our chain here again. It fell down. No big deal. Now we're going to pick this up. We're going to put that on there. Now we're going to take the slack out of this chain by just pulling up on this one. Right here. We're going to take the slack out of this. Just like that. Okay. Now. Now we're locked in place. We walk out to the end of the pole. And again, you have to start lifting here so that you're controlling this fulcrum right here so it doesn't fall off the log. Once you get some pressure onto the chain and it bites in, you're gonna go hand over hand, just like this, out to the end of your pole. Once you get to the end of the pole, you're gonna lift. Once you get your leverage pole about 45 to 50 degrees to the horizon, you're done. You're gonna have to reset it. So you just bring your pole back down, just like that. You can take the lower this chain, and you can take the slop out of the chain again. Now again, you're going to grab a pole right in the middle. You're going to control this right here. Then you're going to put a little pressure on it to let all the chains bite into the stake and walk your hand out to the end and then pull as easy as can be.